Hello and welcome to this special edition of the Fort Report, where we are at the Amy G. Carter Exhibit Hall at the 2011 Waterama event. I'm here with Hilda Zuniga with the Fort Worth Water Department, and she has spearheaded the Waterama event for this year. Hilda, how many years has Waterama been going on? This is our 12th year. And mm -hmm. what? What, tell me about it, what is it about? Waterama is a festival where we try to teach uh, fourth graders uh, the importance about water. We have 28 stations, meaning 28 agencies, all related to water that have come today and yesterday and tomorrow to uh, showcase their information. All are related to water. We have the uh, Texas Department of Wildlife, and they, they're talking about uh, aquatic animals. We have the uh, Corps of Engineers, and they're talking about uh, swimming safety. Um, your, the importance of life jackets. Uh, we, we, ha we also have um, the uh, Texas AgriLife and they're helping the kids uh, learn about water and farming. They have, uh, they're, ma they're making a little grass head there and so they teach them about the planting and all that. And then we also have uh, the uh, EPA and uh, they're bringing their information. So we have just an array of agencies all related to water showing their kids how important water is in our lives and um, really sometimes we don't think about everything that goes behind opening a faucet and this is what we want them to take with them today um, and also the importance of conserving water um, right now the state of texas and other states are uh, seeing drought and we might see that all through the summer so that's another message we want them to take be, be safe and also be aware of what you're, how you're using water. So these fourth graders, when they leave here today, what are some main things that you want them to take with them? That water is important and we need to take care of our water. That's really it. Yeah, we all need to pay attention to how we use water, especially now that summer's coming up and the kids are out. Uh, it's going to be hot and they're, they will want to use the water, so we want them to know how to use the water during the summer. I'm with I'm with Ricky Cotto with the Neighborhoods Division of Fort Worth. Uh, yes. Tell me what you got going on in your booth today. We are playing a game called Water Jeopardy. Uh, so pretty much we divide the kids up into teams and they answer the questions. What's one of the questions you might ask the kids? We'll see if I've got All my right, water stuff um, down. When sliding down a slide. Head first, oh, always. Head first, always. And no, <laughs> you always want to go feet first so that we don't hurt yourself. Okay. So what are two ways um, that floaties do not stop you from drowning? Um, it's like, I don't know, center of gravity thing or what? All yeah. right, well actually, yeah, I mean, we're too, some people are too heavy for floaties. Also, if the air pops out, uh, you're going to end up sinking and they don't keep your head above water. So even if they keep your arms above water, um, you know, you're, you can't breathe, so there's no point to it. Okay, I'm 0 for 2. Let me see if That's I can pull right. out of this. <laughs> what should a baby never do by himself in the bathroom? Water ski. Water ski. That was very close. Take a bath. <laughs> All right. You never let a little kid take a bath by himself uh, in the bathroom. You need to go around and you need to take some notes at these booths so that way um, you'll learn a little bit more water safety. Okay, I think you might be right. So safe. Awesome. Is that water in the right way? Water in the right way for 500. Of the following, 30%, 10%, or less than 5%, how much water can you save at home through conservation? 30%. 30 percent. Yell it out. Everybody yell it out if you know the answer. Okay, very good. Who was that? Yes, are you picking that? I never get picked. And when they come to your booth, what do you what do you want them to leave with? What knowledge do you want will help them outside of here? Well, one of the things that we do in the National Weather Service is we try to teach people about the, the dangers of flooding. Flash flooding, river flooding, the, the creeks and streams in this area can all react very, very fast to the heavy rain events we have in North Texas. So what we're trying to do is educate the kids on the dangers of flooding. When they get old enough to drive, we want, to, want them to know if you come across a flooded roadway, to turn around, don't drown, and be safe uh, that way. What do we have right here in this bottle? Gravy. i got to remember to eat before I go film these things. Mud and dirt. Did you know that dirt can be a contaminant? I'm here with Jesus Rodriguez with the Fort Worth Water Department, and his booth is all about grease abatement. We got this cool picture right here that looks a lot like my arteries, but that's a different story. Uh, what are you trying to get the fourth graders to learn about today? Well, you mentioned that it's like your arteries. That's not a bad analogy, and we correlate that with how the city sewer works. And we're just pretty much trying to protect 
the city sewer, the treatment plant, and in the end, the environment from Greece. And it has a significant impact on the environment. And we try to practice uh, or stress practices such as throwing away grease instead of washing it down, uh, promote uh, non-use of disposals, and that sort of thing. So when I fry up an entire slab of bacon, which is you know pretty much that previous problem I mentioned, breakfast. <laughs> yeah, and I and I eat the bacon, all of it, in one sitting. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, I've got this thing of grease. I, I'm not pouring it down the drain. It goes down there so easily. It's so thin, and you just it's wash yeah. it down. Yeah, and that's the. Uh, the, uh, the ease of it is what we're trying to get. Yeah, what we would like is if you would wipe down the pan, throw it in the trash, or recycle it. Everything is recyclable. This is a miniature model of a grease trap. I'm gonna put some blue dye in here. It's gonna circulate over here, and we imagine that being greasy water. That's pretty much the whole premise of it. Okay, the blue water's gonna come, you see? Imagine that's greasy water. It gets stalled there. The grease separates and goes to the top slightly less dirty water will go over and back into the sanitary sewer and then back to our treatment plant. And that is how we would like all grease traps to work and that's why we stress installation and maintenance of these for all restaurants or businesses that we deem uh, grease generators. What do you need to do whenever you get your Olympic medal? Okay, when I come to you, you're gonna make a flag noise and I'm gonna give you this. All right, Maddie, you're first. You gotta do it like this, watch, you gotta go like this. Quack! Alright, let's go. Quack! Quack, 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 quack. Well, I hope you learned something of 2011 Waterama. I know I did. I'm gonna quit watering at noon, even though that's the best time to run through the sprinklers. I'm gonna quit pouring grease down the drain. And I'm not going to put grass clippings in the street anymore because it gets caught up in the storm drains. If you'd like to find out more, just go to fortworthgov.org and look up conservation tips. I'm Chris Connolly, and thanks for watching.